Here's a quick unboxing review of the Ishin MC01 that Banggood sent me for a review. So let's open the box. Inside we're getting the camera itself. I'm going to wait later in this video. And we're getting also these adapters. You can see. So it's practically the same cable, so we're getting an extra one. We're getting also these adapters. And let's have a look at the specifications. So it has 40 channels. You have LED digital display that display the channel that we are on. It's 5.8G and the power of the transmitter is 25 milliwatt. The weight is 6.8 gram with the antenna. And I think that's about it. It's also 600 t TVL. This is the physical, the pixel quality of the camera. According to my weight, the weight of the camera is six point, almost 6.9 grams. And of course, if you want to make it lighter, you can remove the battery, comp the plastic compartment. That's so the plastic weighs. almost a gram, so after we moved it, we're getting almost six gram, it's 5.85 grams camera. So it's gonna be better because I'm going to plan, I'm planning to put this camera on the Ishin 010 quadcopter, which I have a review in another video. So it's gonna be placed like that and every gram crack counts. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention, this camera gets between 5 to 17 volt, which is pretty useful. Opposing to this camera, which gets between 3.7 to 5 volt, 5.5 volt. So this camera, the Ishin MC01, gives you a wider voltage of usage. Uh, so I think it's a bit better. So according to the ma manual, the top left button is the NTSC PAL select, so you can switch between NTSC and PAL, and this one is the channel selection. In order to change the frequency, you have to press this button, the right button, for one second. If you, if you press for two seconds, it will, so it will change the band. Okay, so I went ahead and connected the camera to a servo tester. I just wanted to show you that in addition to the minus and plus wires, there is also the white uh, wire that uh, en enables you to connect it to a PWM or PW uh, PPM transmitter. And then you can control the frequency from your remote. I don't think that for this mini drone, micro drone, it's a bit useful. So I'm just going to connect it directly to the power transmitter and that's about it. But it does give you the option to change it with your remote. If you, does not, if you do not wish to use this option, all you need to do is just detach the white wire and you are ready to go. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if you want to change the frequency, all you have to do is just short press this button. And if you want to press the, change the band, you have to long press it for two seconds and then it will be changed like that until you see the digit changes that's it okay earlier in the video I told them I'm going to use this camera with the Ishin 0 is 010 but I won't be able to do it because if this camera will get less than 5 volt it will just won't operate I've just tested it and it just won't work so in the next video I'm going to add this camera to the Ishin 010 quadcopter because this one accepts lower voltage. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to plug it to a three volt, three cells battery and I'm going to show the picture quality of this camera. Okay, so I went ahead and prepared this adapter that allows me to connect it directly to the three cells battery. So I will hook it up to my fetch overalls and show you the quality in the DVR and I'll also connect it to a TV to show you how it works. And you can see the picture quality is actually pretty good. And what I would like to do is to test the delay of the camera. Let's see. Take it for a spin. Okay. 
so the signal I think is pretty good so let's test the delay of the camera in order to measure the delay what I'm going to do I'm going to take a picture to so I shoot my phone here you can see the stopwatch and then we can see the amount of delay it's a bit hard to see but I'll be able to do it by stopping the video so let's just start it and if I, when I pause the video you can see the difference between the actual footage on the left and then on the TV you'll be able to see the time on the camera the average delay is about 0 0.08 seconds which are 80 milliseconds so I think that's enough the last thing I'm going to do is a range test so I'm going to take it outside and see how it works Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. And as always, you're invited to subscribe to my channel. Goodbye.